Welcome to a new video and today I'm gonna talk about the battle for Khan. This was one of the most important battles in the Normandy landings. In addition to seaborne landings, the Allies also employed airborne forces. The US 101st and 82nd Airborne Divisions as well as the British 6th Airborne Division which was attached to the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion were inserted behind the enemy lines. The British and Canadian paratroopers behind Sword Beach were tasked to Operation Dead Stick with reaching and occupying the strategically important bridges such as Horsa and Pegasus as well as to take the artillery battery at Merfi in order to hinder the forward for the German forces they managed to establish a bridgehead north of Caen on the east bank of the Orne that the allied troops could use to their advantage in the battle for Caen. Operation Neptune The first operation intended to capture Caen was the initial landing on Sword Beach by the 3rd Infantry Division on June 6. Despite being able to penetrate the Atlantic Wall and push south, the division was unable to reach the city. Their final objectives, according to the plan, and in fact fell short by 3.7 miles. The 21st Panzer Division launched several counter-attacks during the afternoon which effectively blocked the road to Khan. Operation Purge Operation Purge was the second attempt to capture Khan after the direct attack from Sword Beach on June 6 failed. According to its pre-D-Day design, Operation Purge was intended to create a threat to the British breakout or to the southeast of Khan. Operation was assigned to the 13th Corps. The 15th Infantry Division was tasked with the capturing of Bayeux and the road to tilly sur suyer The 7th Armored Division would then spare to advance to Montpichon. June 9, Khan was still in German hands, so General Montgomery decided on a new plan for the 2nd Army. Khan would be taken by a pincer movement, the eastern arm from the attack would consist of the 1st Corps, 51st Highland Infantry Division, the Highlanders would cross into the Orne Bridgehead, the ground gained east of Orne during Operation Tonga. Attack southwards to Sagni, 6 miles to the southeast of Khan. 30th Corps would form a pincer western arm, the 7th Armored Division would advance east cross the Ordon River and capture Efrisi and the high ground near the town Hill 112. In the next few days there were several attacks from the British, but almost all of them failed. There were a few who succeeded, but they were soon driven back by the Germans. The last major Canadian operation in the month of June was directed at gaining high grounds to the southwest of Caen, but ended in mixed result. Operation Marlet. Operation Marlet, also known as Operation Dauntless, was primarily to attack the support Operation Epsom, was launched on the 25th of June by the 49th West Riding Infantry Division of the 13th Corps. Their objective was to secure ground on the flank of the intended advance. The attack gained some ground, however the weather and muddy ground hampered the attack Thus some of the dominating terrain on the right flank of the intended attack by 8 corps was still in German hands. Operation Epsom After a delay caused by a 3 day storm that descended upon the English Channel, the 2nd Army launched Operation Epsom on June 26. The objective of the operation was to capture the high ground of the south of Khan. The attack was carried out but a newly arrived 8th Corps under command of Lieutenant General Sir Richard O'Connor, which consisted of 60,244 men. The operation would be supported by 736 artillery pieces, the Royal Navy, close air support and primarily bombardment by 250 bombers of the Royal Air Force. However, the planned bombing mission for the start of the operation had to be called off due to poor weather over Britain. The 30th Corps were also assigned to support Epsom. On the day before the attack was to be launched, Operation Marlet, also known as Operation Dauntless, was to be launched. The 49th West Riding Infantry Division, supported by tanks, was to secure the 8th Corps flank by capturing the high ground to the right of their advance. The 1st Corps would launch two supporting operations several days following to the launch of Epsom. 
3rd Infantry Division, supported by a Canadian Infantry Brigade, would launch the former and attack north of Caen. The latter would be moved by the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division, supported by tanks, to take the village and airfield of Carpier. However, these attacks would not take place. Supported by the tanks of the 31st Tank Brigade, the 15th Scottish Infantry Division made steady progress and by the end of the first day had largely overrun the German outpost line. Although there remained some difficulties in securing the flanks for the advance. In heavy fighting over the following two days, a foothold was secured across the Odon River. However, in response to powerful German counterattacks by the 1st and 2nd Panzer Corps, some of the British positions across the river were withdrawn by the 30th of June. British as as well the Germans tried a few times to attack, but all the times they were stopped. The operation cost the second army up to 4078 casualties, while the German army lost over 3000 men and 126 tanks were knocked out. Having failed to take Khan during the preceding operations, Montgomery decided that the next attempt to capture the city would be conducted by a mass frontal assault. A new tactic would be used with a lot of close air support, the Royal Navy and 656 artillery guns. On the morning of the 9th of July, Anglo and Canadian patrols began to infiltrate into the city and Carpier airfield finally fell into Allied hands when it was discovered that the 12th SS had withdrawn during the night. By noon, the Allied infantry had reached the Orne's northern bank, virtually destroying the 16th Luftwaffe field division in the progress. A late afternoon, the northern half of Caen was firmly under Allied control. Some bridges were still intact, but these were either blocked or rubble by defended German troops on the south side of the river. The derbers that knocked the street made it almost impossible for the British armor to maneuver, effectively preventing the second army from exploiting its first corps success. Without proceeding the terrain flanking the south of the city, no further gains could be made within Khan, so by mid-afternoon on July 9th, Operation Cottonwood was over. British troops noted that following the battle, in the city houses were still standing and were slowly came live. As the French civilians realized that we were taking the city, they came running out of their houses with glasses and bottles of wine. Consensus view that the operation was tactical success, but one that should have achieved more than it did. It also had been described as one of the most difficult on the campaign. Operation Jupiter. Lieutenant General Richard O'Connor tried again to develop a bridgehead within Khan. 43rd Infantry Division was to retake Hill 112 on July 10th during Operation Jupiter. First phase, the Allied forces were to take Hill 112. Fontaine and Etafia and in the second phase use Hill 112 as a defensive position and move towards Malto. A bombardment of mortars and over 100 field artillery pieces preceded the Allied attack. The German had five infantry battalions, two Tiger heavy tank battalions as well as Sturmgeschütz companies and Nebelwerfer, drawn mostly from the 10th SS Panzer Division with elements of the 9th SS and 12th SS Panzer Division in reserve. The operation failed because of strong resistance from the Germans which had dug the cells in and were well prepared for the attack. The 43 Infantry Division lost over 2000 men during the operation. Operation Goodwood A meeting with General Bernard Montgomery on the 10th of July, the commander of the 2nd Army, Lt. Gen. Miles Dempsey, suggested the plan for Operation Goodwood on the same day Montgomery had approved Operation Cobra. Canadian part of Operation Goodwood was given the code name Operation Atlantic. With this operation, they finally were able to take Khan. It had cost the British way too many men, and this was one of the most costly operations for the British during World War II. While true, this was one of the most heavy fought and bloodiest battles in the Second World War for the British and Allies. It was one which was very important because without this, they couldn't have liberated France. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video.